Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspectives. I'm your host, Musa McGuire. The publication of the slanderous cartoons against the Prophet wasallam, in the Danish newspapers sparked great outrage across the Muslim world. And one of the strategies that Muslims chose to employ to fight back against this, uh, this outrage was the strategy of boycotting. And we want to talk about that issue today on Perspectives. To help us with that, our guest is Dr. Mahmoud Samir Tubar. Assalamu alaikum. Dr. Tubar is a professor of economics at Zagazig University. Right. And uh, we welcome you to the show. Thank you very much. This is an interesting angle. We, we talk about this, this topic a lot, and we've talked about it quite a bit on this show. So what I want to ask you is, from the perspective of an economist, what do you think of boycotting as a strategic weapon that, that we can resort to as Muslims? I think this is the first time you see that all the Muslim world has reacted to this because you hurt their feelings. And uh, the boycott is the most civilized reaction you can expect from the Muslim people. Well, we may not go to the more uh, struggle for burning embassies or uh, try to make any damage, but at least we have to declare and demonstrate that what has been done is a very bad interpretation of freedom of expression. Uh, because you are hurting people and uh, freedom has a limitation in itself. You do what you want without hurting the other people's freedom. Do what you want without hurting the feeling of others. And, uh, you know, the economic boycott is a good weapon because, again, it is a people's reaction by themselves. It's not the government who take the, such kind of uh, uh, actions. It is a people who has been hurted. They don't like to consume the Danish product. If you don't like us, if you don't like uh, our uh, profits, then we uh, don't like you and we don't like your product. It is a very civilized reaction and response to what happened. It is damaging to the Danish uh, economy because uh, as, uh, the Muslims in the whole world are consuming a lot from uh, Danish products, dairy, agriculture, as well as other like insulin and other stuff. Well, if these people are stopping consuming and also they are not behaving for the reasonable political relationship with the mark, then the future will come with difficulties for the Danish people. And believe me, we don't uh, react to hurt the Danish people. We don't react to hurt the uh, all people living in Denmark, but we are demonstrating the heart feeling and anger of uh, responding to what happened with this newspaper and the cartoons uh, coming there. So I feel it is a civilized one. It has its influence on the Danish economy. Well, how long we are going to take this? Every day we find this is apologizing. But when they are apologizing? After a few months. The Muslim foreign ministers in Denmark went to the prime minister at that time when they started. And there was no response. After the boycott, every day you heard the prime minister, the foreign minister, the government is apologizing for what happened. But we need to be sure that this is not going to happen again in the future. Right. So here, I think the move was right. It is more civilized. It is effective, and it has been felt by the people there. And we continue until we get assurance that this is not going to be repeated in the future. Uh, if you could tell us a little bit about the, the mechanics of a boycott, because of course we know that in general you get a mass refusal to buy certain products. But, but what is going on in terms of, you know, once the boycott starts, who is it affecting first? How does the, the message eventually get back to the country? 
Just take us into to, to some of the details that most of us might not understand, not being economists and not understanding the way economies work. When the people start the pie cut, there was uh, lots of products in the shelves of uh, stores there. But, you know, so lots of businessmen wants not to make a damage to this uh, stock in the warehouses. So what they did is they trying to buy this product from them. Of course, they may get it at a reasonable price and give it to the poor for free. Okay. So here you are not uh, also throwing back all this stuff, which is food stuff. This will not be uh, very wise. So here it's wise to give it to the poor who are mostly needed and uh, you pay for it and they receive it free. Okay. So here there was no damage to the poor, uh, to, to, to the stores and there's no damage also to the products exist. But here no other demand on reordering these products again until we find out there is a solution and there is an assurance that they will not do it and they should respect profits. There is limits where they shouldn't jump uh, beyond it. Can you uh, give us any indication on some of the, the actual effects that have happened to the Danish economy? I've read some articles saying that, that, that certain components of the, certain businesses were effectively shut down. Do you have any information on, sure, the, on the exact? Yeah, uh, of course they have also, in this, it's not only concerned with the products exported from mm. Denmark to other countries. But it is also they have projects like in Saudi Arabia. They have daily product projects and uh, this is going to be shut down. And uh, those uh, entrepreneurs who are organizing these projects and run it will be affecting. And uh, also their, their uh, stocks in different companies, price went fell down in the financial market. And of course, this again is going to be in a second round. This is the first round. The second round will affect other factories and other products whom they may invest in those products directly exported to the Muslim countries. So there is, will be another round which may affect more in the future if it continues. It is in, million, in billions of dollars. What exactly do you mean when you say first round and second round? What's involved in the different stages of well, this boycott? Well, if, let's say some of the companies exporting the products has been affected and shut down. They're the laborers working, the people employed in these companies will not receive their salaries. And of course it will affect their purchasing power, spend in the market. The demand will fall down. And when demand fall down, it will affect other products other than those who are exporting in other countries. See. So here it will come and affect others. And this is occurring in Denmark? Is this what you mean? Yes. So the, the domestic economy itself will, will feel lasting impacts from Right, and the, and the impact will be more severe, uh, three months or four months, be clear and, uh, and uh, people can feel it. Is there any way to, uh, when you deal with a boycott, to, uh, to target specific industries or target specific individuals within a country? Or is it a kind of strategy that has to be directed at a general level? So we have to direct I, it at all I, I products? I think we should have a dialogue between us and them. And we have to show the people they are sincere in apologizing and never do it again. Otherwise, it is an action and the movement from the people's side. You cannot press a button and say, well, stop at this point. <laughs> well, they have been hurt it, and that is a reaction. So here, if you say to them, stop, they will not follow you. When they will follow you, if you are convincing them, this is, uh, they have already know that they did a mistake, and they hurt the people, and they apologize, and they will never do it again. Here we have a dialogue in the TV and in the newspaper, People will listen to what happened, and if they could convince, then in this case, they will start stopping this campaign. Well, this has certainly been an unprecedented reaction by the Muslims. I don't think we've really seen anything quite so organized, perhaps at the grassroots level, that really spanned the whole Muslim world.
And certainly, uh, based on what we've seen and what you've told us today, we can see that there is a very serious reaction, a very serious result from this boycott. We're going to go to a short break, but after we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the wider ramifications of this boycott, and if you could tell us a little bit more about some of the overall uh, the economic structures and the way that this might fit into that as well. So please stay tuned. We'll be back in a short minute. Assalamu alaikum.